It is Tuesday afternoon on this July 31st, 2012, and as we begin the month of August tomorrow, it's going to begin with some activity in the Atlantic Basin. As you can see, the Hurricane Center is now closely monitoring two tropical waves, although the first one doesn't really have much of any chance to develop. But the main feature all along has been this wave axis in the central Atlantic, and they have increased the two-day probability of development into a tropical depression to 30%. The latest Central Atlantic satellite imagery shows both of our tropical waves, and the first one is already spreading over much of Puerto Rico, the Virgin Islands, and over into Hispaniola. So we're seeing lots of shower and thunderstorm activity out across the Northeast Caribbean this afternoon. But the more important system to talk about is this tropical wave and area of low pressure. You can see it's starting to get organized on the latest visible satellite imagery. We're seeing more in the way of low level circulation and convection is beginning to develop closer to that center. As we take a more in-depth look at the water vapor imagery, we can see that the area of low pressure is situated in a very narrow pocket that is favorable for upper level winds because just to the north we've got this large upper level trough and this is helping to generate a lot of westerly vertical wind shear and this trough is in association with this powerful upper level low and we've got a second upper level low situated just to the southwest of Bermuda and even this feature is forecast to dip a little bit more toward the south based on the latest model guidance so both of these features on the maps today are going to be vital keys to the forecast. In the low levels, the latest vorticity product shows that the vorticity max is on the increase in strength. So this is just another indicator that our tropical low is becoming better defined. And if conditions remain favorable just long enough, the system may have an outside chance of becoming a tropical depression or possibly even minimal tropical storm by the time it arrives near the Windward Islands at around Friday. But this is still somewhat in question because as you can see, our tropical low is located at around 10 degrees north and if this large and powerful mid to upper level trough were to sink down any bit more toward the south, it's going to shear apart our system with those 40 to 50 knot zonal westerly winds aloft. One thing that does look a little bit more convincing today, however, is that this is going to be more so of a western Caribbean storm rather than one that crosses over Puerto Rico and moves into the western Atlantic. As you can see, the latest tropical model update shows that the suite is now in agreement We've got a lot of the models now taking the system more on a westerly track. And for the past couple of days, the most northerly model has been the Canadian CMC model. And that is because the CMC was developing our tropical disturbance too aggressively. And a stronger system would be more influenced by the mid to upper level troughs. And the tendency of those troughs would be to pull any tropical system more toward the north. But now since the CMC is developing our system a little bit more realistically with a more gradual intensification, it is beginning to shift that track more toward the west. Now by day six, it still has the center of circulation over the extreme southern Bahamas, but I would suspect that over the next one to two days, this forecast will also shift to the south of Cuba in more agreement with the latest tropical model suite. Switching over to the latest forecast from the 12Z run of the GFS model, we see that very similar to the Canadian prospects, We've got more development being shown here just to the east of the Windward Islands. So there is that outside chance that we get Ernesto as the center of circulation begins to pass through the Caribbean island chain. But by days six and seven, as the tropical low passes to the south of Jamaica, you can see that the concentration of the vorticity is not as well defined and it's a little bit more spread out. And that is an indication that the GFS is showing weakening by this time. And some of the consensus that we are seeing in the latest guidance is that the mid to upper level westerly winds across the Caribbean will remain moderately strong, while at the same time the low level easterly winds will be rather strong as well. So the two of those combined could result in the lower portion of the disturbance outrunning the top half of it, which could cause the storm to basically decapitate itself. But anytime you're talking about a wind shear forecast beyond five days into the future, you start to run into a lot of questions. So the best thing that you can take away from this latest guidance is that we could see a tropical storm passing through the islands, followed up by some weakening in the Southeast Caribbean. But even if this storm were to develop and then dissipate or have no longer advisories being written, there is still the chance that we could be watching a disturbance move into the West Caribbean. And just like any other disturbance, we would still have to monitor it as it moves closer toward the Central American region and the Gulf of Mexico. The final model that we're going to look at this afternoon and evening is the latest run from the European. And as we go into 24 hours, we see the vorticity max beginning to strengthen out there in the middle of the Central Atlantic. 
and as we move into early Friday morning, the system is passing through the Lesser Antilles. So even if this system does not become a classified tropical depression or tropical storm, you're still going to face at least similar effects with very strong and gusty winds and periodically heavy rainfall, so be ready for this. And then as we saw with the GFS, the European is also beginning to weaken the system as it moves into the Central Caribbean. And if it were to remain this week, as shown here, it would continue moving westward in the low-level easterly flow and then cross Central America. And still, even if this does occur, it could very well get into the Bay of Campeche or Southwest Gulf. And by day 10, the European is showing some modest development before the system moves into mainland Mexico. But just to restate things, this forecast track, especially in days 6 through 10, is highly dependent on the intensity of whatever system we're dealing with by that point. And if the storm is a little bit more intense, then it may not move westward as indicated by the GFS and European. If it's a little bit stronger, this could still very well get into the central or southeast Gulf of Mexico. So this is just a lot of speculation, but the thing that we're most convinced about this afternoon is that this will eventually move into the West Caribbean and possibly into the Gulf down the road, but anything beyond that, it's just too far out to really tell. So thank you for checking out our analysis, and if you've got interest in the Leeward or Windward Islands and they are not aware of this system, you can go ahead and inform them because they should probably be at least keeping up with the progress of that tropical low, and we will also be following the system very closely throughout the rest of the week here at 28storms.com and the Hurricane Tracker app.